Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and do you remember Mac OS Big Sur? Well, Apple does, and they just dropped a big dot release update 11.7. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update, including the brand new Safari 16 and Open Core Legacy Patcher news for your unsupported Mac on Big Sur. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Let's now go over the full Apple OS release list, and this has changed since my Mac OS Monterey video because additional betas and public releases have come out, so it's a really busy week. First, let's talk about the Mac OS side. Mac OS Ventura is still Still on beta 7. Mac OS Monterey 12.6 was released two days ago. Mac OS Catalina did not get a security update, so it's most likely no longer supported. Xcode 14.0 production final version was released along with the command line tools. On the iOS side, iOS 16.0 was released to the public along with today 16.1 beta and also a special update for the iPhone 14, 16.0.1. So if you got a new iPhone 14, you'll most likely see that update as soon as you power it up. iOS 15.7 is still available if you wanna remain on 15 for at least another month or so. And Apple usually covers security updates for a little while after, and then they'll stop releasing 15 security updates and tell you, hey, you gotta to go to 16. iPad OS got 16.1 beta. iPad OS also got a 15.7 production security update. TVOS got a beta. TVOS also got a 16.0 launch. HomePod OS got a new beta and Watch OS 9.1 beta along with the production 9.0 that was released two days ago. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. If you want to be able to update to 11.7, all you need to do is go into System Preferences and then click on Software Update. It'll take a second to check and it should show the 11.7 update in here in Software Update. Now keep in mind, Big Sur is a little bit different. Apple wants to push you to Mac OS Monterey. So if you see this in here, you might think, wait, what's going on? Where is my Big Sur update? Well, the Big Sur update is actually in the other part of Software Update, which Apple makes it a little bit harder to do. So if we look at the screenshot before I updated, you actually have to click on this more info button to be able to see what updates are actually available. And this is what was showing for me on this MacBook Air. Mac OS Big Sur 11.7 was 2.57 gigabytes and that was updating from 11.6.8. And you'll also notice that there's a separate Safari update. That's been normal for Big Sur for a while. Mac OS Monterey just got this in 12.6. So that's what you'll see when you need to be able to update Safari. Safari will be included in the newest OS, including Ventura when is released, so you will not see that as a separate update. So to install both, they're always checked by default, and all you need to do is click on install now, and they'll immediately start to download. How long did it take to install the 11.7 update? Well, I always keep track of that so you can get at least a baseline of how long it'll take on your particular Mac. If it's taking way longer, you get a better idea. If it's faster, if you have a newer Mac, you can use this as a baseline. To prepare the update after the download, it took seven minutes of preparing time. After that, it rebooted to the installer and it took 17 minutes to install, which was a total of 24 minutes from preparing to usable desktop. 11.7 also has a new build version number. And to get that, you can go to about this Mac here here and click on the 11.7 to get the build version or you can use terminal to do sw underscore vers and you can see that we are now on 20g817. How much space did the 11.7 update take and what was the system size before and after the update? Well, before an 11.6, the system was 15.32 gigabytes for Mac OS. And you can get to here by clicking Apple about this Mac and clicking on the storage tab. And after the 11.7 update was installed, you can see here that the system size was exactly the same. Let's keep track of firmware updates for M1 and T2 Macs for Intel side. On the 11.7 update, the firmware for M1 was not updated. And you can actually look at this list here and then see that it hasn't been updated since Mac OS Big Sur 11.6.7. That was the last one. So 6.8 and 11.7 are the same firmware version. Now on the BridgeOS side, it was updated to 1916, 16, 0, 67. Now one thing that I'm also keeping track of now is the bootloader version. What is the bootloader version or the iBoot? You can get to this information by going about this Mac and clicking system information and you can see the system firmware version which I keep track of and the OS loader version which is 6723140.2. The OS loader version can change whatever version that you're booting. So let's say you have a dual boot Mac M1 and you have Monterey and you've got Big Sur. When you boot it up you're going to see 67 but for example if you boot on Monterey you're going to see 7000 and that's how you can see right away which version of Mac OS that you're loading or the iBoot but the system firmware will always stay the same. 
Apple did release a full installer so you can create a USB installer or do a upgrade. So that's great because as we're getting older here in Big Sur, I'm really glad that Apple is still releasing full installers, but they did not release a M1, M2 IPSW restore file. The final one that they released was 11.6. Now let's go over some of the enhancements in the 11.7 update. And one of the biggest ones is Safari 16. Safari 16 adds tab group enhancements so you can customize tab group start pages with a unique background image and favorites. You can also pin tabs for each group, tabs in the sidebar. You can expand tab groups in the sidebar to see a list of your tabs. Website settings sync. Settings you've set for specific websites like page zoom and automatic reader mode will now sync across your devices. And then finally, strong password editing. Edit strong passwords suggested by Safari to adjust for site-specific requirements. So there's a lot of nice new features in Safari 16. Not only new features come with Safari 16, there's also some important security updates. And when you go to the Apple security update page, it singles out Safari 16 to show you what was patched. And there was four security vulnerabilities that were patched in 16.0. So don't patch it just to get the features. You're also patching some severe vulnerabilities that could affect your Mac. Now let's talk about the security updates in the 11.7 update. There's 10 separate security fixes in the 11.7 update. And I wanted to call out one specific CVE here that I talked about earlier and that is CVE 2022-32894 and this is a kernel vulnerability and this is one that has been mentioned that Apple is aware of a report that the issue has been actively exploited and it's an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Now, why am I calling out this specific one? Well, back in Monterey 12.5.1 was released back in August 17th, Apple did not release a Big Sur security update to patch this vulnerability. And you can see it right here. What happened was is that Big Sur was left vulnerable for at least 26 days until 11.7 came out and patched that vulnerability here. So that tells you that if you want to keep your Mac absolutely secure, you really have to be on the latest production operating system, which is today, Monterey. But in October will be Ventura and then Monterey and then Big Sur will be regulated to security update mode. Big Sur has already been in security update mode for over a year and Monterey has just moved into security update mode with 12.6. And what that means is, is that Apple will mostly only concentrate on security fixes with only major bug fixes being fixed. Now, there will be no more enhancements or any major type of feature added to these two OSs. Let's take a look at the benchmarks from Geekbench 5 on 11.6.8 before we did the update. We've got a single core of 1745 and a multi-core of 7712. When I do the benchmarks, I always make sure that the Mac is plugged into power and I have all the apps closed except for the Geekbench app. After we updated to 11.7, we have a single core of 1731 and a multi-core of 7704, so really close. And you can always take a look at my user information to follow along with all my Geekbench scores. Now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher on your unsupported Mac with the Big Sur 11.7 update. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2013 early 15 inch MacBook Pro. There's a couple things I always recommend before you run the update for software update to go to the next version. First of all, always back up your data. If something goes wrong, you always have your data there and you're good to go. The second thing I recommend is to make sure you're on the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher before you update. As long as you are, you can move to the next step. What I can recommend to save some time also is that you can install the post volume root patches first if you update it to the latest version. And what that'll do is that'll also update the automatic root patcher. Before you jump, you can always check it that if you're even going to need those patches. So you can click on the post install root button. And in this particular version, since it's metal compatible, it doesn't need any post root patches, which is really nice. And that's a feature of Big Sur because Apple left those graphics drivers inside the installation. So the volume does not need to be patched to add them back. So you don't have to worry about the root patches. Now on macOS Monterey, this particular model does need those patches because Apple removed those drivers. So that's where Big Sur comes in and actually has some positives over macOS Monterey for being able to be running without the root patches. So as long as you have those steps done, you can run that update and you can come back up. You'll install the root patches if they need them and they'll be all set. Now, 
there's one more option that you could do. You can build and install open core with the latest version. And what that does is it installs open core to your internal hard drive EFI partition with the latest version. Again, if you, you don't need to do this every time, but if you want it to be on the latest version, just go in here, set these settings that you want, and then return to the main menu and install that to your hard drive and reboot. And then you're fully updated with the, all the features of 0.4.10. Do I recommend installing the 11.7 update? I do. And again, I've mentioned in my Monterey video, I don't necessarily give the update recommendation every time. So some of the previous Big Sur updates only fix a small thing that maybe be related to an application that you don't even use. So why even go through the update if you don't need to? But in this particular case, there's some pretty big security updates here that you need, especially that one that was patched in macOS Monterey over 27 days ago. And now you can get your Big Sur Mac patch for that vulnerability. I do recommend installing the update, but make sure, as I always recommend, before you install an update, make sure you back up all your files just in case you have something go wrong, but it's a very small percentage, but you're always safe then. And that's 11.7 update. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up or a share. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can click on that subscribe button. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. I can't thank Thank you enough and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.